So if you have some question, please unmute yourself and ask any coaching related question, please. Hey, mate, not, right maybe not coaching, but oh. um, are those YouTube things age specific? So definitely some of them, yes, some of them not. Some of them are quite general, but there are some topics which I was uh, putting for literally specific ages. So yes and right. no. And does it say it on it? Like, yeah. Yeah, there's right. always okay. a small description. There's always a small description. Yeah. So you can, depends what you're after. There are yeah. some exercises for the virtual training, which are kind of not age specific. And you can yeah. use them even for yourself, even for your kids. Yeah. There are some coaching tips or training problems, which would specifically occur on your training session with your kids. So depends. Yeah. Anything else, Matt? Yeah, I've got a couple in my team that are uh, like well ahead of the others. So I've got like a bit of imbalance. So I've sort of, is there anything exactly there that, to deal yeah, with that? That's I've got some that basically just kick it wherever they go. Like, like if they see the ball it is, and others that actually play. So, so what division you know, team you have? A year end division? Under eight. Division? Oh, I don't know. Nine, I think. Okay. So yeah. this will always, this will always happen. Yeah. So yeah. regards coaching points on structuring your session, you always want to find balance how to structure the session. So you want the yeah. good kids not to be bored. And let's say the kids who are not so good to still learn something about football. So yeah. in I'll those scenarios, doing, I'm doing the game day, not the, not the coaching. We've got another guy doing the coaching. So we sort of okay. communicate, but just when it comes to game day, it's a bit of a, like I put all the good ones on. They, they like they're well better than where they are, but then there's others that don't know what they're, what they're doing, you know? That will Probably. unfortunately happen. So with them, yeah. definitely, I would try to ask them some questions to get them into thinking and like, all right, mate, when you kick the ball out, did it help our team? Could we score a goal out of it? Probably not. So yeah. what could you do with it? So yeah, no worries. generally speaking this way, yeah, right. Bilu, you had, you had some question as well? That's actually my daughter's name, but anyway, but yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Actually, it's, it, was, it was about, it was probably the same sort of thing, actually, but more to do with the actual training session. Like, what do you do when, yeah, one of your, part, some of your players are far more advanced than the others? All right. So with, with me, I'm quite of a person who likes to think ahead of this. So for me to answer this to you, it would be, did you set up, what is your aim? What do you want to achieve what do you want to achieve with your team after a year having them? Just if you can give me a quick answer to this. So let's say you have your team. What do you think your team, what do you want to do with your team in a year? So what do you hope they would already know, they would already done and stuff like this? This is, I would say, question number one. If you want them to have fun, then structuring the session will be probably always in different scenarios of a game or game situation or just games with different rules. But if you say that I want my players to improve on uh, passing and receiving on shooting, then you need to incorporate it in your training. And then you would need to adjust those specific ideas that they suit everyone. Maybe what works for me if I'm having like this, this discrepancy between players is that I will set different rules for this player and different rules for those players. All right, we're playing a game, guys. We're playing a game. All right, mate, we're playing a game, but I want from you today to score five goals, but all of them can be only with your left foot. So I'm creating different set of rules in within a game. So I'm making it hard enough for this player to be interested and easy enough for this player to be interested. So it's always a balance between... <laughs> so it's always a balance between having everything as you want to. But again, I would backtrace it into what is your aim to achieve with your team? Did I answer a bit to that or? Yeah, no, you did. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's good. Cool. Any other question? Um, not for me. Guys? I've got a question. Um, at, at what age is it appropriate to start <clears throat> teaching them positional uh, different positions because I, I do the under, under under sevens team and trying to get them to do anything other than just follow the ball around like a pack is is quite challenging is there are there certain 
Is there a certain age where that starts to be, become a little bit um, easier? Yes. <laughs> and uh, and what what are some good tips on how to? All right, so I will tell you my philosophy on this was when I had young players, I was trying to achieve. In your age, what is the division again? Under sevens. Under sevens, what division? Oh, I don't know. We, we just play against each other in a round so, robin. So, so generally speaking, under sevens, it will be quite difficult, yes. What I'm trying to do with my team is not to teach them positional awareness, but to teach them... If you are a player in front of me, I want to know how to help you in case you lost the ball, in case you run away. So I always want to, the first thing what I will teach is how to react on a closest player and then kind of build it in a net of players. So it will always happen that they will move like a bunch of bees. But now if you can on your training environment, like to, all right, guys, freeze. Now, imagine if the ball is over there, how can we react to it? If all of us go this way, we can't do much. And I would, I would retract it from individual players. All right, mate. So first, what you can do, what helps, is I'll do it on the whole screen. So if you split the field onto three zones like this, yeah? So if this player, he cannot never, ever appear on this side and vice versa. Middle players, go wherever you want. Side players, right now, you can play, if you're in here, you can play only in those two zones. That can be your first easy step that you kind of divide the field into some zone and it's really simple to kind of like understand for the kids. All right, I should not appear there. In case they do, probably they went too far. So that's one way how to do it. Second way can be that I always want to know how to secure or double up the nearest player. How can I help them regarding attacking or regarding defending? So it means if a player next to me drops out, what do I need to do? I need to move instead of him. But if I drop, what is this guy doing? And again, transfer it. If your closest player moved, what are you going to do? Move, let's say, instead of them or with them or something. So another thing can be as well that you kind of try to explain them that you're trying to keep different distances of players, between players, but it's already quite difficult. Maybe I would start with a, with a simple thing. Divide the field. If you got goals on the, this end, if you follow me still, then play not a football game, but a handball game. All right, everyone pick the ball up in your, like if you have the ball, pick it up in your hand. You cannot tackle, you cannot run with the ball, you can only throw it somewhere. So that means by this, you kind of slow down the game, you put the ball in their eyesight, and the whole aspect of the field is in front of them. And on that, you can explain them. All right, if all of us move there, what you actually can do? Nothing. If the ball is there, how can you help elsewhere? So kind of slowly introducing some of the rules. But if you go straight to the question like, how do I help my team not to play like a bunch of bees? That's, that's tough. It takes time. But definitely tools to use will be split the field, put the ball in their hands, explain them behavior of the closest players, how to help each other. And when you play a game, what I would say as well, where you got normal game, go up, go down in here. When you are somewhere on a side, introduce a new ball in a game randomly. So they play, they play, play, play. All of a sudden, all right, guys, new ball here, play. Blah, 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 blah. All right, new ball here. So you kind of get them to a moment that, all right, why do you need to run always up and there the whole team? Maybe some of you can be closer to it, maybe further, so you can win the ball easier and you can progress from it. Yeah, so again, goes to the point of not playing with only one ball because it kind of splits their attention. And sometimes they kind of like, everyone tries to focus more. At first, it may be really chaotic, but generally speaking, I'm using this for under 10s or 11s that I play games with multiple balls and different rules. So let's say what I played with, my tw with the 12s in here was that they play with one ball in the hands, one ball on their foot. And we played a football game. And there could be multiple goals. By that, I achieved that some of the players spread their attention. They moved on this side, but this guy actually had to think of how to cover them and attack as well. So I'm giving them again more objectives in which I'm trying to make them focus and be, be thinking about where to be. Long answer, sorry. Cool. That's helpful. Thank you. That's good. Something else, guys? Actually, I've got one other question. Go for it. Um, 
So they've got to the age where they kind of like particular positions. Um, so we've got some, some girls who like do, do actually do like defence, surprisingly enough, and some who like to be in midfield, some who like to be in, in uh, attack, and they sort of they do well in those positions, and they're probably 12 girls, um, Division 3. So the question is, do we sort of, do I um, sort of try and nurture them in those positions that they like to play in, or still get them to try and play like in previous years, I still got got them to try and play all over the pitch um, all right. in various if, games. If you're already saying that your players are profiling a bit, that they want to be somewhere and really don't want to be somewhere else, I would maybe not shift them completely from a left back to the right winger, but move them around the area where they are comfortable. And you can slowly be extending that range. And then again, maybe in an older age group or like maybe later in a season when you, when you really find out what is, where they are good, I'm only moving them in certain zones, certain area. But I would still not completely put them in, pinpoint them in certain positions because let's say, what, is, what are the chances that next year will be the team again exactly the same? What's up, what if someone else will come? What, like sometimes what I try to do to them or explain is, all right, guys, maybe next year, he, he, and he, or she, she, she won't be here. So, and there will be another new striker who will come. So what else? Then I will need to put you in defense or you won't be playing. So do you want to know how to play there? Do you want to experience that as well? Or you don't want to play? So we can slightly manipulate this, but I would still definitely move them around. I'm not saying completely throwing them everywhere. If they do not really, if they really, really are against it. Otherwise, in your age group, I'm still a big fan of everyone going everywhere. With teaching yeah. the principles, with teaching the principles of how to behave on them. Because again, let's say if I don't like defending, I'm a goalkeeper to what I do. So if I don't like defending, I would still play in defense, but my coaching points would be, all right, I want, you, I want myself, uh, let's say, I want to notice how the striker behaves. I want to notice from which position is easiest to score. So again, give them some sort of jobs to do on positions they don't like but the jobs they should actually help them achieve to be better player, if it again makes sense. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Joe. Sure. Hey, Radim, I've got a question. Hello, Fogo. How are you, Matt? So, um, in, in my years of coaching, um, there was always, we always had some input from the parents. Um, and it was always positive, but sometimes, you know, you got you got the wrong message. So the message that was coming in from the sideline was, you know, boot the ball out, get rid of it, you know, kick it long and stuff. And how how would you, I guess, um, how would you advise coaches to deal with that uh, to make sure that the kids are listening to the coach rather than listening to the hundred voices that are coming in from right. the sideline? For me, the easiest way how to deal with these comments from, let's say, parents or people around would be if my sessions are engaging and they like them and they are fun and the players feel that they're getting better, they would naturally rather listen to you as a coach advice and say even to their parents, I have a coach there. So one way is to make your sessions really interesting that the players will create uh, bonds with you and they will listen to you. Second would be to have a chat with all the parents before the season, mid, mid of the season, doesn't matter, but tell them what you want to achieve. So if you have a plan, if you have an idea what you want to do, tell them. If they don't agree with that, open a bit of a discussion and just tell them, all right, if you don't like it, come and help me with it. Yeah, but quite often it happens that you guys put your hand up because no one else wants it. That I would say is the easy, easy way how to deal with it. Not easy, but it's a way how to deal with it. Yeah, for me, like create, a, create an environment that the players will actually not want to play like that is number one. And as well, number one is have a chat with the parents before the season. So kind of like you set the expectations on both ways, on both sides. Okay, thanks. Yeah, guys, if you don't have any other questions, otherwise I'm happy to stay uh, because I'm at the Kellen Park. We're running our development program right now. So we still have some time, but I will not hold you. My idea is that we will be repeating different topics. Oh, no, we will be repeating those meet these meetings. 
maybe not through Zoom, maybe through Teams or other application, which the club will be using. And if you want to hear about something, like some topics, let me know. Because anything what we present, I want to do for you guys. Because I really feel that we, we want to do more for you guys, coaches. So already right now on our webpage, you can find some uh, materials regards coaching, but they are mostly just training sessions. What is my aim to give you a bit more of tools of how to coach and how to approach your kids and regards the effectivity. But if you after just looking at what, what sessions I can do, you can see that because on the web page under the players and the coaches only, there is kind of like a login zone. If you log into it, then you can see all the season plans what we had. And slowly I will be trying to add up to it as well. A few more things about how to coach, what to do, when to do, the eight specifics and so on and so on. Yeah. And right, I guess the, me the message, guys, is that we need to spread the word because we're a very, very big um, club. And, you know, just listening. I'm, I'm Fergal, by the way. I'm involved with the club and the development yeah, he's, committee. Yeah, Fergal um, is one of our executive committee. Yeah, but, you know, we, we, we've got a, such a huge club and we've got these fantastic resources at our fingertips. And we've got Radim, who's a fantastic head coach. And, um, you know, the, the, the more we can spread the word around um, how we just coach better and it doesn't need to be technical it, it just you know it, they're just simple little hints and tips around getting the most from the kids and and to be honest all you want at the end of the day is to make sure that everyone that you're coaching is just having a good time right and you know it doesn't matter if they're good or bad you know if, if you can make the you know that there's always different abilities within a team and if you can bring on the player who you think is maybe not as good and at the end of the season they're doing something that they haven't done before then then you know that that's fantastic but if we can spread the word um through your age groups that we have these uh, that redeems available and we've got a lot of resources on the website um then that's awesome because we all kind of need to help each other out because it's a tough gig right <laughs> but it's fun <laughs> yeah Anytime you would want to discuss something, you can either find me through the email or call me to my number or on, from Tuesday to Friday, I'm actually at Callum Park nearly every afternoon. So you can literally come in here and just, we can talk together. I can show you a few things as well because we will have teams training in here. So maybe they will be already doing something which you might be interested in and so on and so on. Um, Redeem, there was a question from Darren. It was just, um, would the presentation be a made available afterwards um, yep. so maybe just email you yeah please send me an email so i can send it to you directly otherwise i will try to hang it on the web page and when the info platform will be there it will be way more available but right now if you want to see anything out of this definitely cool Quick question do you have specific training on on goalkeeping like for instance where a lot of us have played in the past and all that and we know ideas of how to coach outfield players but goalkeeper is a whole different matter altogether so. so definitely what we do as well in within our development program we open the goalkeeping goal, uh, goal, goalkeeping sessions and lessons for different age groups so at the beginning of a season on our webpage you can sign up to it and you can have literally goalkeeping sessions for your goalkeepers otherwise if you asking if there is already something on the webpage for yes. goalkeepers right now not at the moment but i would like to fix that as well you used to be goalkeeper, right, Imran? Right? Oh, I don't want to use the past tense. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Otherwise, guys, I will wish you a good evening. Hello, sir. <laughs> so, uh, I wish you a good evening. Thanks for joining. And if there will be something like round two, I will definitely let you know. Thank you again for being here with us.